Did you know that according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, two-thirds of all our fruits and veggies eaten in the United States come from outside the country? And there are all kinds of problems with that. For one, an apple that had to travel hundreds or even thousands of miles to get to your plate can't be all that fresh or nutritious. And I say that's just crazy, especially when we can grow so many different varieties in our own front and backyards. Jumping into growing your own food is actually quite simple. You just need to know the rules. My free webinar, Introduction to Urban Farming, begins to frame out your pathway to growing your own healthy food. In this free webinar, you'll learn the three simple steps to becoming an urban farmer, the five components of healthy soil, and how to think regeneratively, which is, by the way, one of the most important concepts we need to be exploring right now. Will you join me in this webinar and help co-create the food revolution? Just text GARDEN to 44222 or go to urbanfarmu.org to sign up for your free webinar. That's GARDEN to 44222 or urbanfarmu.org. You're listening to the Urban Farm Podcast, your partner in the Grow Your Own Food Revolution. Whether you've just been introduced to urban farming or you're a lifelong advocate, we're sure you'll leave feeling more informed, equipped, and empowered to dig deeper into the soil of your local food economy. With you every step of the way, here's your host, Greg Peterson. Today on the Urban Farm Podcast, we have Kim Roman of Square Foot Gardening for You to talk about her experience with high-value veggies. Kim began gardening using the original square foot gardening method in the late 1980s. She learned the all new food gardening method and became a square foot gardening certified instructor taught by Mel Bartholomew in 2010. She teaches the next generation of certified instructors, yay for her, and serves as one of Mel's assistants. Along with her daughter-in-law and Mel, Kim is working on a children's version of the all-new Square Foot Gardening book. She is the owner of Square Foot Gardening for You, a woman-owned veteran business in Glen Burnie, Maryland, where she teaches. She can be reached at sfg4u.com. Welcome to the show today, Kim. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So I shared a bit about you. Can you fill in the blanks for us and share more about the path you took to get where you're at now? Absolutely. I actually, as you said, met Mel Bartholomew back in 2010, and I began my own square foot gardening-based business in 2011. And you know how it goes. You have to kind of position yourself as a quote-unquote expert. Mm -hmm. So that's why I took the certification class, because I thought that I wanted to teach people the joy of gardening Mm -hmm. and to get them enthused about growing their own food, even if it's just one container on their patio or a square foot garden or a whole homesteading garden. And I'm also a member of the um, Garden Writers Association. Oh, wow. That's cool. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. It is an association. Uh, We are actually expanding it to be the uh, garden communicators because not all of us just write. Some of them take beautiful photographs and tell their story through pictures. Others are video people, videographers. And I would probably think a bulk of us are writers and or speakers. So we go around the country and around the world spreading the joy of gardening. Wow, how cool is that? Oh, it's wonderful. You know, it, the philosophy I go by is each one reach one or each one teach one. So that's all we got to do is if we want to get everybody gardening, we just share the joy with anybody we meet in our in our circle of influence. So say more about that. Each one teach one. What does that mean? Every time I turn around and I teach one person, if they turn around and teach another person, whether it be in their family, in their church, in their school, they've reached one more person and convinced them to garden. That person keeps on going, and soon we get the whole world uh, growing their own food. Wow. That's cool. So tell us more about your path to getting where you're at. Okay. Well, 
as we said, we talked about me starting uh, to use the original square foot gardening uh-huh. back in the uh, late 1980s. I actually started gardening when I was a child. My dad taught me a little bit about gardening. And back in the 1980s, I was raising a young family. My husband and I met when we were both in the Air Force. And he would be gone on long uh, tours Mm -hmm. with uh, the different conflicts. And gardening was almost like a way that I could mark time with the children. Hey, when the tomatoes are red, Daddy will be home. Things Mm -hmm. like that. Mm Mm-hmm. How sweet. And that's what I, you know, that's how we started with gardening, and it just became a passion. And watching watching my sons light up when they grew a pumpkin of their own in a little tiny military housing unit <laughs> where we just had maybe uh, maybe four foot by four foot on the side, side yard. So mm-hmm. anybody can do it. So you've been working with Mel then for a while. How did that happen? Well, of course, I read the Square Foot Gardening book. Uh-huh. And when we were over in Germany, well, originally, as I told you, I was started with the original method. Right. And then when he came out with his new, his all new Square Foot Gardening book, it was a completely different method. And I kind of dug my heels in, and I'm like, well, you know what? <laughs> This, the the old method is good enough. I absolutely love it. I'm not going to change. But then my husband and I moved to Germany, and so I had to start a new garden. So I figured I might as well try this all-new method. And I wanted to kick myself for being so stubborn and (laughs) resisting the change, and I love the new method. What's the difference between the two? Well, the original method started out with double digging, mm. amending your own soil, and it was, a, you know, not a lot of work, but it was still work. Mm-hmm. And the new method is so simple, you can start out growing absolutely right the first day of uh, starting your garden. Oh, nice. Nice. And when did that come out? That came out in 2007. <clears throat> Perfect. And that was okay. So let me go back a little bit. Uh-huh, please. Mel actually started. He introduced the original square foot gardening method in 1976. So we're on our 40th anniversary. Oh, wow! I'm really, really proud of that. Uh huh. So 20 years ago, Mel started the square foot gardening foundation, and the mission of the foundation is to end world hunger. That sounds like a really lofty goal, but then Why again, not? with this, yeah, with this each one, you know, each one teach one, right? Then that's that's how we can slowly. It's going to take a while, but yeah, we can help everybody that eats food. <laughs> I like that. Everybody that eats food. I uh, whenever I lecture, I always ask people how many people participate in the food economy. And, you know, about half of the people raise their hand. I said, the rest of you don't eat? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So then in, okay, when we were over in Germany is when I took the home study course Uh to become a certified instructor. And when we returned back to the States, I found out there was a three-day symposium in Utah, appropriately Eden, Utah. Oh, Wow. And Mel was going to be teaching it. And it's like, you know, hey, I get a chance to meet God, so I'm going to go. Exactly. And, (laughs) you know, who wouldn't turn down that chance, that opportunity to to learn from the person that wrote the book? Mm -hmm. And then, of course, I came back to Maryland on fire. A funny thing happened when I was out in Utah, when we checked into the lodge where we were going to be having the symposium. Mm -hmm. The lady behind the counter said, oh, you're from Glen Burnie, Maryland. Do you know the other gentleman that's here from Glen Burnie? Oh, my gosh. I just got chills. It turns out uh, one of the other students lives about five minutes from me. Wow. And we had to go all the way out to Utah to meet up. How cool is that? So So what year was that? 
That was uh, 2010. Okay. And that's when I got to first meet Mel. And he is such a giving and gracious person Mm -hmm. that you just can't help uh, Mm -hmm. catch his enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, through the years, I have done a little bit to help his foundation. And recently, in the last a uh, little over a year now, I have been one of his assistants and helping two other wonderful ladies, Belinda Jensen, who lives in Utah, and Amy Guyette Hall, who lives in Connecticut. And the three of us are sort of the next generation of the foundation. Nice. You know, we talked in our pre-conversation about in permaculture, we call this secession planning. Yes. You know, making sure that, you know, that, that the conversation keeps going. Because Mel's getting a little old, isn't he? He is. He is. Uh, I think, uh, I think 84. Yeah. Now, yes. And, uh, you know, he, he's a little frail in health, but mm-hmm. um, wonderful, still that wonderful, caring spirit and still sharp as a tack when it comes to <laughs> everything he's he's still that curious little boy mm-hmm. who used to who used to garden with his mother a couple of years ago yeah well i am so glad that you the three of you are stepping into you know kind of carry the torch forward because in my opinion the single biggest thing we can do is is human beings on this planet is learn how to grow food and what y'all are doing is just amazing so thank you well, for that. Thank you. Yeah, thank absolutely. you. So, so that pretty much brings us to 2010, 2011. Tell us a little bit more. Right. So in the spring of 2011, I was a very naive person. I did not know that you don't just approach a TV station and say, <laughs> send them an email saying, "Hey, do you think your listeners would be." Uh, interested in square foot gardening, well, guess what? Sometimes being naive it's really good. has its yep. advantages because the producer said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So I got my start with our local ABC affiliate. and Oh, wow. Yes. And then next thing I know, the phone starts ringing and saying, hey, can I take one of your classes? And then shortly after that, again, being naive, I contacted the Maryland Home and Garden Show producers, Uh and I'm going, well, do you guys need speakers? And, you know, yes, we do. This is awesome. (laughs) And (laughs) so, yeah, I'm one of the most naive people on the planet. Getting a lot done. Correct, but it works. Getting a lot done, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Or as I say now, nowadays I say, have mouth, will travel. <laughs> so t- make the connection for me. It's 2010, 2011. You're giving these classes to 2016. And now you're basically, you know, th- one of the three people on the planet propelling this whole foundation forward. How did that happen? Well, there again, being naive, <laughs> I asked Belinda and Amy, who were already helping Mel with the foundation. Hi, do you need any help? <laughs> Stupid question to ask. No, the not foundation at all. Always needs help. Of course. So I just, you know, I clicked with them and it's kind of funny because I gave you our geographic locations. We never met personally until last June up wow. in upstate New York. <laughs> wow. So it was. It's really nice. I mean, we're a great group of women. Mm-hmm. We have all different talents, and it just seemed to mesh that we had together. You know, synergistically, um, yeah. have the you know capability to help Mel with the foundation. Yeah, perfect. So I want to talk about this new book called High Value Veggies. And first of all, it's a stunning book. You, you guys have done an absolutely stunning job. I get an email from Lola Honeybone, the publicist, and she wanted to know if we'd be interested in talking about uh, the square foot gardening high value veggies. And it's like, hmm, this woman belongs on a uh, on a TV show or something. 
absolutely. I think she sounds like a, a great character in a Southern Belle or a John Grisham novel. How's that? <laughs> absolutely. Um, so I, I responded and I said, oh, my gosh. Can we get somebody from, from there to, on the podcast to talk about this? Because, and she said, yeah, sent me a copy of the book. So I'm literally, I'm, I've got it in my hands right now. And apparently um, it is March 15th and apparently it doesn't release until tomorrow. So Absolutely. I got this pre-release and this is a stunningly beautiful book. And the information in it is just absolutely incredible. I can't say enough about how valuable the tool this is going to be moving forward. Um, why did he decide to write the High Value Veggie book? That's a great question. So after teaching someone to garden, which I'm sure you've done in your lifetime, oh, yes. the very next question almost inevitably is, well, what should I grow? And mm-hmm. you know, that's a really hard question to answer because everyone grows a garden for a different reason. Mm-hmm. But the majority of people say usually what they mean is, if I only have a small amount of space, what makes the most sense for me to grow yeah. economically? And I'll bet I'll bet it's all in the math, right? Well, absolutely. <laughs> and let, let me give you a little history of Mel Bartholomew. He was a very successful civil engineer and efficiency expert. Oh. So he came about gardening in a totally different mindset than most gardeners. Most Mm -hmm. gardeners are master gardeners and botanists and horticulturists, and Mel isn't any of those things. He's an efficiency expert. Mm. So back in the day when he would ask experts for their opinion on gardening, Mm -hmm. why do we rototill and then step on exactly what we've rototilled? Why do we make a long row, 30 feet long, open up a package of seeds, sprinkle it down that row, and then when the green stuff starts popping out, why do we rip out 95% of it? of them. (laughs) No kidding. You know, and then their their answer was always because that's the way we've always Mm -hmm. done it. Yeah. And that doesn't set well for, you know, an efficiency expert. So he created, uh, you know, he created his, his method of, gr- of gardening. So the high value veggie book was the, all right, the best thing to grow if you want to save money is our herbs. And he had to lump that all into one category uh-huh. where that would have taken up the top 10 list by itself. Oh, yeah. But then there are those things that if you uh, grow a square foot of potatoes, it's actually costing you about $6.22. Oh, I saw that in the book. Where you could be buying them in a grocery store or better yet at a farmer's market Mm -hmm. cheaper than you can grow it at home. And those are the -the run-of-the-mill potatoes. Right. You know, if you want to grow fingerlings or purple potatoes, of course, that makes a difference. But mm-hmm. the the old russet potatoes. Right, exactly. Exactly. So in section one of the book, Mel uses what he calls a dollars and cents calculation to help people figure out how to get the most out of their gardens. Talk to me about that, please. <laughs> okay. And in that case, it's instead of C-E-N-T-S, dollars oh, and cents. That is correct. He has a dollars and cents, S-E-N-S-E, yep. calculation to help p- people to figure out. Mm-hmm. And what that is, the formula or the calculation is the yield per square foot over an entire growing season. Mm-hmm. You multiply that number by the national average cost per pound at a retail store, either a grocery store or a farmer's market. Okay. And that equals the value of the harvest Mm -hmm. for that season. Of course, you got to subtract things like the total cost of your inputs, right? the cost of transplants or seed potatoes. I don't know about you, but I cannot go to the store and buy one seed potato. You have to buy a whole bag, which costs a good bit of money. Uh, Transplants, 
feed, the cost of water, your cost of soil amendments. So then, by subtracting that, Mel figures out the return on investment, ROI, in both a dollar amount and as a a percentage. percentage. Yeah. Wow, perfect. So, and this is coming right off of uh, section one, page nine of High Value Veggies. Uh, it's yes. you know, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so, it sounds simple. It might be a little bit confusing for our listeners. Can you give an, us an example of a particular crop? Right, I, and I totally agree with you because it, once you read it three or four times, uh-huh. you you get to where you understand it. So, let's talk about thyme, the the herb. Okay. <laughs> so, usually, you go to a grocery store. And you find a few sprigs of thyme that weigh less than an ounce in a little tiny plastic (laughs) container at the grocery store. Now, how much does that cost you? It costs about 3 or $4 for a couple of sprigs. Now, if it's organic, it's probably more like 6 though, right? Well, I'm just being kind. Yeah, all right, cool. So, (laughs) yeah, so when you grow, when you grow thyme, you can get approximately two pounds of time per square foot. Wow. So that would give you the two pounds times the cost would be $42.44 per pound pound times two, because you can grow two pounds in a square foot, Right. and that's going to equal $84.88. Now, you bought a transplant, and you put in water, and you put in soil amendments. So those are your cost of inputs. Right. And that's about $15.80 for that square foot. Mm Mm-hmm. So when you subtract the cost of the inputs from that $84, it's Mm $69.08. So that's your net value of your harvest, or four hundred and thirty. dollars percent return on investment wow well like he says yeah he says that is it's all it is all in the math right so I, i like that he puts it in an actual dollar figure for those that like to work with dollars Mm -hmm. And as a percentage, and again, he, you know, pardon the pun, he calls it his dollars and cents calculation. Yep. So for those people out there that don't have one of these beautiful books in their hands, I'm on page 38 and uh, on page 38 is basil. And in the, in the bottom right hand corner, it gives us price per pound. Obviously that's in Mm -hmm. 2016, uh, uh, yield per f- square foot, then the value, the input, the return on investment, and so on. So, he, on each of the for each one of his forty or so crops that he's chosen, these high value crops, he's done this calculation for us. Absolutely, and that's that's handy. But then again, you know, the reason he gives you the uh, formula uh-huh. is so that you can do it yourself, it yourself if there's yeah. something that he has not included. Yeah, I do like basil. Return on investment, 15,310%. Woo-hoo! <laughs> That's cool. That is cool. Mel suggests people keep a ledger of plants that they grow. Why is that? That's pretty good. That's a great one, too. When you look in your own area, your the cost of the vegetable or the produce is going to be different where you are compared to where I am. Right. If you're in California, I mean, water probably costs three times what it does oh, here yeah. in Maryland. Uh-huh. So, you know, he wants you to be able to tweak the formula because his top 10 might not be exactly on mm-hmm. spot for where you're located. If you happen to live next to a parsnip farm, <laughs> you're going to be able to get parsnips a lot cheaper than if, you know, it has to be trucked 1,500 miles to your location. So this gives you the opportunity to tweak your own, Got do it. your own calculations and to tweak it for your situation. So maybe a page for each crop in your in your um, ledger. Yeah. Uh, and keep track of it than, than that. Yeah, perfect. Fantastic. So 
I'm intrigued. He frames out, and this is really cool also, he frames out the top 10 and bottom 10 uh, most valuable vegetables. Can you talk about that? Sure. Okay. Now, again, I think I mentioned that Herbs are yeah. the, the number one things to grow. Mm-hmm. If you if you use herbs, oh my gosh, in your cooking and you do not grow them yourself, <laughs> you are wasting a lot of money. Big time. He did have to lump that all in together as the number one crop to grow. Oh yeah, because again, you it would take up uh, the the whole all ten spots. <laughs> right. But number two, which kind of surprised me, actually. Let's uh, let's let's ho- yeah. let's hold off before we go past the herbs. Um, okay. I, and I just wanted to say, Mel is is a brilliant man. He actually agrees with me about the herbs um, and their value. Here's what I've been telling people this for years, and and for those of you that don't, that don't know it, Mel's probably 85, and Greg Peterson's 55. So. Um, <laughs> There's a pun in here, uh, but what I tell people is the simplest thing to grow and the most expensive thing to buy are herbs. So you really need to be growing your herbs. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And the be- best thing of all, a lot of your herbs you can grow indoors. Oh yes, absolutely. So I've got a dozen or ten uh, rosemary plants I just bought oh, at, nice. uh, at the Maryland Home and Garden Show. Nice. And, yeah, they'll be good gifts. Uh, I will be the favorite person on the planet when I start uh, giving these out. Yeah, no kidding. I, I, I recently saw a quote from somebody. It said, uh, the sign of a good farmer, a sign of a good gardener is that they buy plants that they have no idea what they're going to do with. It sounds like that might have fallen in that category a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, perfect. All right, so number two, parsnip. I know. I don't think I've had parsnip since I left Germany. Uh-huh. I love them, mm. but I've never thought to grow them myself. Hmm. And now that I know that they're the number two best return on investment, I might want to start thinking about that. Interestingly, I grew parsnips for the first time in ever in 41 years of growing food this year. Wow. Yeah. I don't, why don't we ever think to grow these, the, the parsnips and, you know, leeks and rutabagas and things like that? Yeah. Uh, a good question. I have no idea. So that's number, so number one and two. Three, yeah, number three is uh-huh. cherry tomatoes. And I don't think that's going to surprise anybody. Yeah because of how expensive they are in the mm-hmm. stores. And now he's talking about the little red cherry tomatoes. Think of how right. much more the golden ones are. Mm-hmm. If you can even mm-hmm. find them in the store, I would think you might be able to find more varieties at the farmer's market, but then the different colors are going to go up in price. So, Right. Garlic. Yep. Garlic. I mean... I need to grow more garlic. I have a friend, and I love going to his house after he's pulled the garlic and he has it curing on tables in his basement. And why don't we grow more garlic? It's very simple to grow. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh, it, it's super simple to grow. That is so much, and it's so much fun to grow. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, you're not buying that uh, bleached white garlic from china that's in the grocery stores exactly so for for the for the rest of the top 10 i'm gonna let them get your book get mel's book that sounds good do me a favor give me the the bottom five real quick all right so really quick and it's gonna surprise everybody number one well i guess it would be the the worst vegetable to grow if you're going to do it economically, it's potatoes. Yeah, surprise, surprise, huh? Brussels sprouts <laughs> is number two on that list. Mm-hmm. Bell pepper. Now, remember, that's the green pepper that you can mm-hmm. buy really inexpensively right. at the store. Then Swiss chard and asparagus. Now, you would think that asparagus would be better to grow, but you can usually get some really good deals on asparagus at the store. And it does take so long to grow asparagus and yeah, so it it actually costs you more than if you were to buy it at the store. There you go. And there is there is definitely some value in growing it yourself. You know what's in it. Sure. Um, so this isn't a definitive guide of don't do this and do this. It's just a guide to 
kind of give us the data, correct? Correct. And the way he says it, he goes, now, even even though it's important to note that just because a crop falls to the bottom of the list, Mm -hmm. they absolutely should not be dismissed because... Again, as you say, you have control over what goes into that soil, what gets sprayed on it, Mm -hmm. and it um, also would depend on what varieties of these veggies that you want to grow. Again, fingerlings or purple potatoes would be, you know, would bring the value of it up a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. Also, not everybody wants to, is concerned about the cost of the veggies they want they want it because it's an unusual variety that they cannot get in the store they want to do it because it's what their kids love to Mm -hmm. grow and they don't want to take them drag them to the store to buy these cute little easter egg radishes or something like that you know you're, but the variety that you can get in seeds and transplant is so much better than you can get in the store. Yeah. So I'm going to actually thank you for that. And I'm going to shift uh, our conversation here a little bit. Uh, and I want to know if there's any projects that you're currently working on. Well, I am actually working with a Boy Scout that is going to do an Eagle project. Uh-huh. And ac- actually what I'm trying to do is I put a call out to, for Eagle Projects or Girl Scout um, Gold Star Project. Uh-huh. Anybody know a kid that wants to do a gardening project, let, let me know. Nice. And I did get one what, that we're working on, a project with World Relief, uh-huh. which is a Christian organization that uh, helps resettle refugees. Wow. And I've got to tell you, though, it, when some of some of the times we're getting a negative connotation on the word refugee versus immigrant uh-huh. versus illegal alien. Oh yes. Uh, the refugees that that they work with, a lot of them have come from Iraq and Afghanistan, and they helped the American troops by interpreting for them. Mm, now, so nice. they're marked for death over in their country. Oh wow. So, you know, let's you know, let's have a little compassion, uh, you know, and what when they come to the states, they're not used to our highly processed foods. Oh my gosh, that is the case. Yes, and so what I'm doing is working with this Boy Scout and we're going to do a project where they're going to put in some probably raised garden beds, mm-hmm. by square foot gardening beds, and they will we found a contact with Baker Creek Seeds. Oh, perfect. That has, you know, they have seeds from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we can find the seeds, the the produce that they're familiar with. And guess what? That's going to help them be a little bit more self-sufficient so that we're not going to have to help them as long. Yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. So... Can you talk about a time you failed, how you overcame that failure and what you learned from it? Oh, no, I've never had a garden <laughs> failure at all in my life. Nobody has ever had a garden failure if they're a good gardener, exactly. have they? <laughs> so actually, I look at gardening as a huge science experiment. And you know yourself that sometimes when you put chemical A with chemical B, it comes out really great, and then you know that if you add a little bit of chemical C, which you think is good, Uh that it blows up in your face. (laughs) Okay. So that's, you know, I always encourage my students, you know, just if you've had a failure, last year my uh, big tomatoes didn't, I didn't get one that wasn't mushy or mealy or Uh blossom end rot, Mm -hmm. you know, but it doesn't matter. I like to push the limits. Mm Mm-hmm. I plant a little bit earlier than is recommended for my zone, Mm -hmm. or I select that plant that says, I'm in 7B, and I might say, huh, I wonder what this one that's made for zone 8 and above will do. Oh, nice. Yeah. You know, so I experiment with microclimates and protecting the crop, and seed is cheap. 
<laughs> so don't be afraid. And with square foot gardening, we don't rip open the package and spread the whole thing out. We only use, a, you know, one or two seeds per hole. Yep. And then we put that seed packet in a baggie with a silica packet and we throw it in the refrigerator and we use that packet for five years or more. Right, exactly. So, you know, what I do think smart, if I plant early, mm-hmm. maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll mm-hmm. plant another seed, Round. In, you know, yeah. to have it, yeah, to, to just a in, little insurance there. And so I'll plant it at the quote unquote proper time. Mm-hmm. You know, so, and then, you know, just making sure that if you've planted something out of your zone and you're going to get a little bit of a late frost, that you're prepared with the equipment to create a microclimate for the plants. For the plants, there you go. What do you consider your biggest success? I think I would call myself a bit of a rebel. So <laughs> nice. that I don't follow all the So I don't follow all the gardening rules. Right. <laughs> you know, so... Um, I I think my biggest success was stop being stubborn and going from the mm-hmm. original square foot method to mm-hmm. the all new method. Yeah. You know, I hate to say that, but yeah, it it was a um, an aha moment for me mm-hmm. that being stubborn might be good in some things, but you know, <laughs> not so, so not so much in the others. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, what drives you? I think, really, it's kind of simple. It's going to be a simplistic answer, and I think it's my love for people. Mm. I love people. I have that bent where I I love to help people. Uh Since I have knowledge on how to garden, and I know that it's a valuable skill for others to have, I like to share it with others. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So, short answer, I know. (laughs) Beautiful answer. It's, you know, that's perfect, so... And I'm all about education, and I have to know, is there one book that has been most influential in your gardening process? Well, I know it is going to be a complete surprise to you (laughs) when I say that it's going to be the all-new Square Foot Gardening Uh, book by Mel Bartholomew. (laughs) Perfect. And why is that? It is because it is a super simple method. People... No matter what excuse they come up with, oh, I don't have space to garden. Hey, you don't need space. Oh, I don't have time to garden. Huh, I've got this fairly large garden in my Uh backyard, and it takes me 10 minutes every other day. Oh, nice. Oh, I'll forget to water it. Huh, do you have one of these? And I'll hold up a cell phone, and they go, well, yeah, of course. Hey, why don't you set the alarm? Oh, yes. For a specific time during the day that you know you're available, right before you sit down to watch uh, TV on prime time. So, yeah. I There's, thought I thought you were going to tell me that there was an app that was going to water my garden for me, and I was going to squeal. Yes, th- there you go. It, th- it not only does it water your garden, it will prepare your food. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> so there you we, go. We, we do everything, everything. But the reason I like Mel's book is because he doesn't just have the number one best-selling garden book of all times <laughs> that has sold two and a half million copies. Wow. He puts it out additional books. He has mm-hmm. one for gardening with kids. He has another one, Cash from the Square Foot Garden. He has a curriculum that school teachers can use to teach almost every subject using square foot gardening as its basis. So he has equipped us. So to me, it's like a franchise of books. It's not Mm. just one. Mm -hmm. And he is giving my daughter-in-law and I the most uh, wonderful Mm. gifts to work with Mm him on the children's versions of his book. So we're going to be writing those written. One is going to be written at the elementary level Uh and the other at the middle school level. Nice. Nice. So one final piece of advice for our listeners. Well, 
I think probably most of your guests and yourself have probably uh, shot this one out, but start small. Mm -hmm. Maybe just one raised bed with only two or three different types of vegetables in it. Now, once you've mastered learning how to grow those, add a couple of new vegetables every year until you become secure or proficient at growing those. You're never going to be proficient at gardening your first year, so don't even worry about it. And don't be afraid to fail. I guess that's two pieces of advice. That's but. perfect. That's absolutely perfect. And the failure piece is huge because I tell people all the time, I've killed more plants than you ever will, I promise. Not on purpose. Absolutely. Not on purpose. It's just how we just how we learn. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining us on the show today with us, Kim, and sharing your experience uh, around urban farming and and uh, the square foot method. Thank you so much for having me. And I appreciate the opportunity to talk about high value veggies today. Absolutely. So how can our listeners get a hold of you? Well, actually, I'm going to tell them how to get a hold of the Square Foot Gardening Foundation first. Perfect. And that would be squarefootgardening.com. Mm-hmm. And on there, they can pre-order the book, or actually tomorrow the book will be available. Mm-hmm. And also, of course, it's available on Amazon. But the on the squarefootgardening.com site uh-huh. you can also take you can also take classes or learn how to become a certified square foot gardening instructor and go out and teach others to do the same thing and and move your thought forward what was that thought that you had earlier one person one each one each one reach one or each one teach one nice So they can also join us on Facebook at Square Foot Gardening Foundation. Mm -hmm. And if they'd like to join me on my business page, it's Square Foot Gardening for You. That's the number four and the letter U. And they can reach me if they're, especially if they're in the Maryland area, Mm -hmm. for classes at sfg4u.com. Perfect. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us on the Urban Farm Podcast. Did you know that according to the U.S. Food and Drug Administration, two-thirds of all our fruits and veggies eaten in the United States come from outside the country? And there are all kinds of problems with that. For one, an apple that had to travel hundreds or even thousands of miles to get to your plate can't be all that fresh or nutritious. And I say that's just crazy especially when we can grow so many different varieties in our own front and backyards. Jumping into growing your own food is actually quite simple. You just need to know the rules. My free webinar, Introduction to Urban Farming, begins to frame out your pathway to growing your own healthy food. In this free webinar, you'll learn the three simple steps to becoming an urban farmer, the five components of healthy soil, and how to think regeneratively which is, by the way, one of the most important concepts we need to be exploring right now. Will you join me in this webinar and help co-create the food revolution? Just text GARDEN to 44222 or go to urbanfarmu.org to sign up for your free webinar. That's GARDEN to 44222 or urbanfarmu.org. We hope you enjoyed today's episode of the Urban Farm Podcast. Remember to listen three days a week for tips, advice, and resources to help you on your journey with urban farming. You can find us on the web at urbanfarm.org or send us an email to podcast at urbanfarm.org. In the words of Vincent Van Gogh, great things are done by a series of small things brought together. Be encouraged that with each lesson learned and skill developed, you are one step closer in the direction of your dreams.